right after a sacrifice of screen time. This is a commercial special, therefore we must give thanks to those who continue their ways. This episode brought to you by DoorDash. Praise to the advertiser! Click, Click the, the link, link below. below. The app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. We're thankful for you, almighty sponsor! Remember to use the promo code. Oh, now we got that out of our system. <gasps> Commercials! After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. After these messages. We'll be right back. Something's coming up the plumbing for Luigi's in a bite. Before the Mario Brothers movie has you saying, eh, close enough. Atari was advertising the original Mario Brothers game in a pretty bizarre way. Giant turtles out to get him, creepy crabs are right behind. Oh no, my pipe has crabs. You should see a doctor. I am a doctor. Mario, where are you? Aren't you Mario? Oh wait, it's Luigi. That's right, back then he was somehow both brothers at the same time. Oh my god. Was this scene authentic? It's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. I mean, if their last names aren't Mario, how would they be brother- Ah, it's still too stupid to put in the universe. Spider flies, jeepers, shites, they're all coming out the pipes! Mario, where are you? Man, those advertisers know how to lure Mario kids in with that hot car 54 where are you music craze. How can you not spot the comparisons, idiot? And it's twice the fun when two play at once, cause you need all the help you can get. Look at these Tim Burton turtles trying to hump him. He has the dead eyes of someone who has no idea why he's programmed to do this. With Mario from Donkey Kong and his brother Luigi using their heads to stay ahead. Honestly, this is a pretty inventive ad. It's not really like Mario Brothers now, but you can't say this isn't what it was back then. It's weird, but it's creatively weird. I like it. Mario Brothers, the Atari video game cartridge versions available for all Atari systems. Start playing now and you can turn out like this super fan. I spent hours of my life stomping Koopas. Oh man, this one. This came out around the release of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The rumor is Spielberg himself directed this, though I couldn't find any proof of that, but regardless, it's still a pretty epic ad. It starts with a couple watching Raiders of the Lost Ark when the wife wants to snuggle. While you're up, would you get me a soft drink? Oh, by the way, honey, I remodeled the kitchen. Also, you may want to lay traps down. We have snakes. Uh, the real Indiana Jones wouldn't use a snake as a rope. I know because he did in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Please choose. Jesus, how long is she taking? He went from the beginning of Raiders to the end of Crusade already. Choose wisely. Discover real cola taste with just one calorie. I don't know what the other option was, but Diet Coke is never the right answer. Case in point, even the place is trying to punish you for what you picked. Diet Coke, why couldn't you put the money from your productions into soda that actually tastes good? <laughs> well, I got what I needed. <laughs> wow, you're the most handsome face side boob of Ford I've ever seen. You have chosen wise. You should have seen the guy who grabbed an RC. Yeah! This ad pulled out all the stops and is damn impressive. I'm not sure who directed it, but the fact that this feels more like a Spielberg Jones production than this does is really saying something. Fedora hats off to you. Discover the one calorie real cola taste. Diet Coke. Hey, I want a Pepsi. Now it's time for the Pizza Head Show. Well, you couldn't be a 90s kid without seeing these ads. These were Pizza Hut commercials with the Pizza Head Show. A lot of us grew up watching these ads. I have to admit, for a while, I hated them. Mr. Pizza Head was a high-pitched puppet who just wants to have a good time, but the narrator, who's just a pair of hands and a mean bully named Steve, always wants to make his life a living hell. Our team's playing a big game right now. Yay! Coach Steve says you're in the game. Hey, he's not a coach! Sure he is. <laughs> Welcome to Kids Night. Hey, you need a date. Steve oh, Wait a minute, that's not a girl! Sure he is. No, not yet! <laughs> when you have a Pizza Hut pizza delivered, you can get an autographed bread and ball. Yay! Empire Steve says play ball. Hey, he's not enough! 
sure he is. Here comes the pitch. Griffey hits it deep. While this campaign was a big hit and ran for an impressive eight years, it was eerily similar to an SNL sketch called Mr. Bill. It was literally the same thing. Mr. Bill is a high-pitched puppet who just wants to have a good time, but the narrator, who's just a pair of hands and a mean bully named Sluggo, always wants to make his life a living hell. No, oh, all that coke you bought last night was real expensive. No, but I didn't buy it. Sorry, Mr. Bill, but we'll have to sell the house. <laughs> For so long, I would show other kids this hilarious show, and they'd always say, oh, Mr. Bill is like Pizza Head. And I'd say, no, you son of a bitch, Pizza Head is like Mr. Bill. It drove me insane that all my friends were laughing at Pizza Head without knowing it was a complete rip off Mr. Bill. But then in doing some research, I found something out. Pizza Head was created by Walter Williams, one of the guys who created, you guessed it, Mr. Bill. Here is actual footage of my reaction to that. I bring this up just in case someone was as dumb as me not to realize this. With that said, these ads are pretty damn funny. I really have no reason why other than they're just violent as hell. He will cut you in half. Ta-da! Remember, this is the age of the crash test dummy toys and chopping up your adorable board game characters. Of course this was a big hit! Quick, Pizza Head, slip this on. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. See you next time. Boy, what a lousy flight. My favorite is just when they destroy the set at the end of each one. As if to say, yeah, we know it ruins the effect, but who cares? Just break shit. See you in the next lifetime. Let's be honest though, these don't even need a story. Just seeing a cute little character get beaten up is really all that's necessary. Which is why I propose we don't even give him a story. We just heard him. Giving more time to advertising pizza. Hey you two, what are you doing? Oh, we're just about to go get some Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut? Oh, I love that place. You mind if I come along? That would be great. You know, I hear they have new skateboard toys for kids. You don't think some crazy antics might happen from that, do Whoa! Pizza Hut Pizza is part of a complete breakfast. What? I don't know, I was just so distracted by the hilarious carnage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, call Domino's! <laughs> Even if they don't go with that, these commercials are still pretty damn entertaining. Sim Salabim! See you next time! Man, what a cheesy act! Clap on! Clap off! Here's another one many of us in the 80s and 90s grew up with. If you were the laziest shit ever, the clapper was a godsend. All you had to do was clap, and the lights turned on and off. Which of course made redneck birthday parties very difficult. Come on, honey, blow it out! <laughs> yeah. One of the biggest staples of the commercial is its catchy as hell jingle. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clapper. clapper. Cute, but that's not what I love it for. I love it for its life before the clapper demonstration. No joke, this is how the commercial starts. Honey, turn off the light. Has this ever happened to you? Jesus' butthole! What were we, cavemen? Seriously, if you didn't know what this was an ad for, would you even guess the problem? Has this ever happened to you? I guess I do like to grab lamps like a dildo a lot. Presenting the clapper. No clapping won't help, it'll only encourage it. Look, you gotta put in some urgency. Has this ever happened to you? What? I'm buying whatever saves me from that! Turn on and off just by clapping. Clap on the music. It was a whole step to get there. We really do need a DoorDash app for this kind of thing. Clap on! Oh, thank God, I'm in time to see the commercial for the even more useless product. The clapper resets to help protect your home. Leave your appliances plugged into the clapper, and your lights will go on. Oh shit, it's a clapper house! These people are poor as shit! They even made a smart clapper. As if to say, yeah, even we know the originals for dumbasses. How smart can it be? I mean, I'm really stupid.
and clearly getting aroused by whatever has the clapper's name on it. What's up with that face? Clap twice to turn one appliance on or off, three times for another. It knows the difference. Is this really keep mouth open worthy? Oh wait, I should use that line for the guy dick handling his lamp. Clap on, clap off. Clap on, clap off. The Smart Clapper. It's a catchy jingle, but a tacky and weird as hell commercial. Clap on, clap off. The clapper. clapper. I can't get up! Yeah! My poops, my poops, my poops! Well, I can guess why the comments were turned off on this. This is for a product called Poopsie Slime Surprise. And if that name alone didn't gross you the hell out, the rest of this ad surely will. Was baby brats not disturbing enough for you? Well, somebody threw unicorns into the mix and made somebody I never want to meet happy. <laughs> hey, Internet, have you ever wanted to see My Little Pony crossed with Rainbow Bright as a shiza stripper? Of course you do. You're the Internet. What you gonna do with all that poop? Uh, all that poop? Yeah. Woo -woo -woo. Oh, I'm sure some sites will take it off your hands. As long as they can film it being taken off your hands. Drive crazy, insanely concerned, same ballpark. Yeah. All right. How are you even snapping? You have hooves. And you all know the most ironic thing? After all of this literal shit being advertised, I poop, my poop, 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 I poop. She doesn't even poop. <laughs> She just dances and sings about being a doll that can poop, but never actually poops. Can't honestly say I'm not disappointed, just surprised. Maybe that's where the surprise in the title comes from. Poopsie dancing unicorn! She really sings and dances! But not poops, where would you get that idea, freak? What else can you say but... The horror. The horror. Here's all the no I have. Take all of it. Darling, it's our anniversary! Why so glum? Okay, so we know times change, we're a flawed animal, we're trying to get better as we evolve, but good hot instant Jesus, these Folger ads from the 60s or something else. The setup is always the same. The husband in a marriage doesn't like his wife's coffee, so she quickly buys Folgers in order to please him. Maybe you think that sounds shitty. It is, but just listen to the delicate way these husbands let them know. You make me feel very unwifely, McNaughton. Go barbecue. I still say don't serve your awful coffee with my steaks. Jesus, guy! Also, who the hell serves coffee at a barbecue? Oh, that's one of the nicer ones. Take a listen to some of these others. How can such a pretty wife make such bad coffee? I really should have kept the receipt for her. I heard that. Good! It's our anniversary! Why so glum? Well, it's your coffee. Again? Honey, your coffee just doesn't taste any good. Oh, this guy's a sensitive asshole! Look at him holding her hand! As if to say, it's not your fault your breasts hog all the fat from your brain. Did you ever see Larry looking so happy? Well, honey, happiness is a vacation. <laughs> Away from your coffee. Was there a bad coffee epidemic back then? Polio? We'll get past it. Influenza? We've gotten through worse. Back coffee locked down until a divorce lawyer is safely escorted to every home! Is the coffee alright? Mm-mm. You mean it's as bad as yesterday? Mm-hmm. No improvement at all? Mm-mm. So you're not gonna stop having affairs with our next-door neighbor, Joe? Mm-mm. Clearly coffee's the problem in this relationship, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ooh, what does Colonel Sanders Pringles Roosevelt have to say about this? Attention, ladies. I've set out a brand new, can't-miss, husband-pleasing coffee. Each one comes with a free mistress, guaranteed to look more attractive than you. It's my gym again. You should have heard him this morning. Mary, your coffee is as undrinkable as ever. Oh, and Jim's usually so nice. Sounds like a goddamn sweetheart. You get the point. This neighborhood doesn't have a coffee problem as much as an entitled dickhole problem. I love this one dude who can barely look her in the face after she has the nerve to say he's kind of acting like a prick. Honey, your coffee's undrinkable. It's pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. Well, see you later. 
this just in, millions of husbands impaled on their coffee makers. Wonderful anniversary, dear, and thank you for the flowers. You're welcome, darling. But if you could do one thing for me... Go down on you? Try to do something about your coffee. Oh. They got it figured out. This guy rejects his wife's morning kindness, throws it on her garden, and then has the balls to point and yell at her like she's the one being difficult. Oh, this coffee is criminal. Honey, you killed the petunias. Then you admit it. Your coffee really is murder. I can see why this one's called Papa Eddie Solves a Crime. Papa Eddie's trying to figure out who cut off Papa Eddie's finger and shoved it up Papa Eddie's poop hole. My coffee, it's murder. Like I said, though, the answer is always Folger's coffee, because it's mountain-grown. It's mountain-grown. Mountain-grown? Mountain-grown for richer flavor. Yeah, do the symbol. No woman smart enough to know what a mountain is. You know, it's a crime not to have delicious coffee like this all the time. We will, now that I've discovered the mountains. You mean you got the boob job? <laughs> I'll give you no repercussions for that. No, you won't. These ads are terrible. Like, I know they're the 60s, but even the 60s is looking at this saying, Hey, I don't know that Folger's ass all over there. And here's the thing. We don't have any PSAs to review this year. We couldn't really find any good ones, and we're also afraid YouTube's faulty age restriction might muck things up. But let's be honest, there's an unintentional PSA in here. You just gotta look close. Yuck, honey. Yes, dear? I finally let you out of the storage closet, and this is the coffee you make me? Well, that's a little harsh. So is the coffee. It's murder. I know. I put arsenic in it. Another escape attempt? Well, I would like to know what the sun looks like. I'm sorry, honey, but this just won't do. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to... Would you get that? Get what? That would be the door. Yes? Oh my god! Not you! Salute Wilkins Coffee! Forever, my love! <laughs> I think that's a message we all can get behind. It's almost as good as this ad. Vote yes to DoorDash. DoorDash has always been there, and he's doing what he can for your hunger. Whether last minute school supplies, impromptu dinner, or fresh flowers for that special occasion, with DoorDash, there is a neighbor of good in every order. Unlike this rock, he's not doing anything, he's just being a rock. That's stupid, but DoorDash is DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. Unlike this rock, he's still stupid. But every time you place an order for pickup or delivery, you're setting off a chain reaction that helps give back to people who make your neighborhood unique. Here he is with somebody nice. I don't know who he is, but he looks nice. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Here he is as an eagle. With DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, but supporting the community you love too. From the stores and restaurants to the dashers driving around, every purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because, with DoorDash, there is a neighborhood of good in every order. And the great thing is you don't even have to vote for DoorDash, because it would have made sense to run this while elections were going on. But I just thought of this this morning, so leave me alone. All you do is download the app, and you can do so with a special offer. For a limited time, our viewers can get 50% off, up to $20 value, and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code CRITIC. That's 50% off, up to $20 value, and zero delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code CRITIC. Rocks don't do that because they're the devil. Don't forget, that's code CRITIC for 50% off, up to $20 value, and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Say yes to the DoorDash app, and maybe, together, we can think of a better line to end this ad on than this. Hey kids, slide on under and do the chicken limbo! Yeah, you think the clapper was catchy? You know that's nothing if you grew up with this commercial. Chicken limbo's the one, big fun. It's a cute idea where you just limbo under this chicken's... 
tail? Okay, I don't care what anyone says. That's a chicken sack. Don't believe me. Listen to the chicken's voice when he narrates. It's Chicken Limbo, the musical limbo game. The spinner tells you how to go under the bar. Yeah, he's like a bird Hermes from Futurama. He even likes to limbo. Chicken Limbo's the one. In Jamaica, we got 10 story office buildings lower than that. But when you hit his nads, <laughs> that's the sound I make if someone hits my goody goods. Look at his face at the end. That dude's high as hell on pain medication. And who can blame him? If somebody kept headbutting my happy place, I'd want something to make me forget who I am. He has a look that says, Oh my god, just. just end it. Chicken Limbo's the one. Big fun. Go under without bobbing the chicken. Bobbing the chicken sounds like a lonely activity you do when you can't get a date. Hey, Frank, what'd you do last night? Oh, you know, I just stayed in and bobbed the chicken. Which just proves my point that's a cock's cock. <laughs> Whatever you think it is, it does have a catchy song and it is an inventive idea. I never did get a chance to play it, but for the sake of this poor animal, it looks like he deserves a rest. Invite me to your next party! Chicken Limbo! Just end it. Stop, Dick! Dick Ray Master Plumber! Let's pray to God this guy has a good sense of humor. This is from a channel that doesn't even have a hundred subscribers. We can change that. I need Dick Ray! My pipes are clogged. Well, let's take a look and see if we can help you. I'll take a look at your plumbing, too. Looks like Bob's toilet is running again. Second time this month. Really? Of all the visuals you can use for Dick Ray plumbing, that's the one you go with. Honestly, to watch these videos evolve is kind of like watching Skynet evolve. At first, you think the acting is just a little awkward. They don't know what they're saying. Dick Ray's a master in fixing leaky toilets. Looks like Dick Ray got him. Then you start to wonder. It's raining in the oh! Help! I need Dick! Dick Ray! When you have a naked person in the shower, any dot 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 can be taken the wrong way. <laughs> then you know they figured it out. Well, you better call Dick Ray Master Plumber. Dick's already here! Thank goodness for Dick. What would we do without Dick? The way he's click baiting these, he really should be called a master baiter. And then they lean heavy into it. Gosh, what would I do without Dick? You gotta love Dick. Who doesn't? Dick's the best thing I've gotten since the Wonder Boner. With Dick Ray, Master Plumber, there are no buts. We show up on time, quickly diagnose the problem, and fix it without breaking the bank. A good plumber should always show up on time and have a distractingly dirty name. Yeah, these ads are really great. They show slowly, but surely they are in on the joke, and they honestly have an adorable way of utilizing it. There's nothing else to say, but who doesn't love Dick? If you don't know Dick Ray, call today. Oh, I get it! I get it! Oh, very cute! <laughs> oh, it was to be a soggy, soggy day indeed. So it's gonna sound weird, but there was a time when cereal commercials really were cereals. They had to be continues and created contests where you could impact the outcome. But by far the one I remember most was freeing Captain Crunch. Because it had five parts! I guess children's series couldn't be commercials anymore, so they made commercials children's series. You see, the head of the Soggies, an evil robot named Squish the Sogmaster. Yes, Captain Crunch has lore. Try setting a trap for him. Something suspicious here. A giant tidal sog with a trick! The funniest thing is they try to make it engaging while still selling the product, and it is such an awkward mashup. I swear I did not edit any of this. Will breakfast be sog? <laughs> Nothing can stop me now. Captain Crunch is a crunchy part of a balanced breakfast. Will you stop treating this like it's a commercial? Shit's getting real, man! Imagine if another big to-be-continued had that treatment. I'm glad you're with me. Actually, they try to make it so epic, I wouldn't be shocked if they had a Lord of the Rings-style narration in this. Cereal has changed. I feel it in the milk. I smell it in the crunch berry. Munch that once was is sog, but now none live that make it a complete breakfast. Our hero is washed on a rocky wall of doors. Oh no, shut behind a door, locked with a key? Captain Crunch gets trapped behind a door and you at home have to follow the clues inside the cereal boxes to figure out how to free him. It was pretty clever.
And what about crunch power that locks delicious taste in? Breakfast is doomed. Buddy, you have weird life goals. Breakfast is doomed. Tomorrow, lunch. Look out, snacks, I'm on my way. If you help Free the Captain, you get a chance to win a $100 share of the million dollar reward in the Free the Captain sweepstakes. You better hurry, they're gonna start milk boarding him next week. Come in, Captain. Captain Crunch. Kids, you're safe. We have an idea to free you. Security. Listen up, sog face. Hey, there's no need for slurs. Yeah, this will clean up their act. Take this, you soggy terror thunder the bitches. Kids, the yellow door. Sog merch. Oh no, sog balloons. One hit and... We're sog. You know, I wonder if our government would put down money to save him. Like, do they see him as a necessity? No! Green? No! Then it must be the purple key! They do finally get him out, but there's actually a surprise climax. Good god, they're pulling out all the stops! You're not out yet! A Sog Dragon! <laughs> Release the Sagan! You'll never guess what saves the day. His cereal! Sog out! God damn, is that the Superman theme? Turns out John Williams is a diehard Quaker and Diet Coke fan. So yeah, this was really over the top and ridiculous, but as these cereal contests go, it was kind of fun for what it was. Thanks to consumerism from little idiots like me, breakfast is saved. Toe Captain Crunch proudly sails home, still a delicious part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> In honor of Gilbert Gottfried passing this year, I figured I gotta talk about this one. Gottfried plays a smoke detector teaching kids about fire safety. Admittedly, it is pretty funny getting someone with that kind of voice to play a fire alarm. Who are you? See more smoke! Smoke detector! <laughs> I'm basically Pennywise if I was left on the grill and smashed with a spatula! I hate smoke. It's disgusting. Ironic, because it sounds like I smoke a tire fire every other day. Because when they smoke, there may be fire. That's what my agent said every time I did a risque tweet. Good tip, Seymour. What does that mean, Seymour? It means I'm tripping balls. What is up with that face he's making? <laughs> like the last look a deep fried hamburger helper makes. It's so unnerving. How many smoke detectors do you have in your home? Is there one outside your bedroom? Is there? There should be. You'll see more of me later. In that reoccurring nightmare where Pac-Man's a clown. Let's be honest though, we all know where we really want this to go if a random kid hurt Gilbert Godfrey from, well, really anything. Whoa, who are you? See more smoke. Smoke detector. Wow, well, what are you doing here? A talent agent is sitting in his office. A family walks in, that talent agent goes, what kind of an act do you do? Then the father shits on the floor, the mother shits on the floor, the dog pisses and shits on the that floor. The talent agent says, well, that's an interesting act, which is kind of an understatement. I'll wait till you're ready. It's no masterpiece, but does leave an impression. And you know a lot of that is from the loudmouth wonder himself. I see it or smell it, I make this noise to warn you. <sighs> this is an ad for chips. Clearly self-explanatory in case you didn't catch on. This is a weird series of commercials for something called Eagle Chips. You'd think they have something like an eagle, but nope, it's a disembodied face. Whoa! Hi, I'm Face. I'll be your choice of death tonight. Woo how about a little trip to the kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> how did this mascot not catch on? Oh, give it this. It is freaky as hell. If the mask has son of the mask, then son of the mask has this. Well, you got anything to eat? I got these eagle snacks. Eagle snacks! Eagle, 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 eagle. <laughs> I laced them with fresh molly this morning. That might explain some of the things I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
I want to take his face oh. and also turn this ad. Oh. What the hell else am I even supposed to say? This is a product that went from the odd couple advertising it. Eagle chips are the quintessence of taste and crunch. Each chip should be savored. To goddamn this. Hi, I'm Face. No! I don't like it, but I remember it, so there's that, I guess. Just ugh, just, just ugh. Eagle Spats, what you feed your face? Never play this again. <laughs> oh my god, this has to be one of the best long, long running commercials. It's from Japan and it's advertising a candy called Sikaru Gummies. It starts off humorous enough with a couple sharing candy, but then discover a man eating a long, long piece of candy, immediately turning the woman on. Long, long man. All right, that's pretty good, but they just keep going with it. In the following commercial, she sees him at a different location, and the song once again plays. Long, long man. Super Bowl ads, take notice. This is called funny. You used to be this. Not surprisingly, though, these ads go very long and very satisfying, as he shows up as a delivery man at her door. Long, long man. Somebody order a dick ray. Oh my god, he's the delivery guy? What, you watch Long Long Man? No. Yes. It's so long. Well, come on, get over here. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Uh. <gasps> oh my god, are they going to? I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> long Long. Oh my god, I haven't seen this one! Wait, you watch Long Long Man 2? Yes, I mean, no, I mean, it's so long. Get in here! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is he gonna- Get your ass on that couch! <laughs> Long, long, man. Shorty has a good man. But long, long man is long, long man. It's so long. I don't do her heart still belong to him. But she still sees long, long man everywhere. You see him everywhere. I do. Shows up to her wedding. I knew you'd come for me, long, long man. I mean her. I mean, I knew you'd come. We all knew that. Hey everybody, this month for Cameos for Charity, we're doing Wounded Warriors Family Support. 
Their mission is to provide support to the families of those who have been wounded, injured, or killed during combat operations. The families of these casualties suffer in many ways, some physically, some psychologically. They offer veteran training to assist in meaningful careers, family retreats, and custom outfitted vehicles and grants to enhance the lives of the wounded vets. Rated a four-star nonprofit by Charity Navigator, Wounded Warriors Family Support aids veterans and their families in healing the wounds that medicine cannot. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday, congrats, or whatever, click on the link below and know the money is going to a good cause. Or if you're like, screw your face, I would never get a cameo from you, well, consider checking out this charity anyway. It's a wonderful organization to donate to, spread the word about, or even volunteer at. Take a look at all the amazing good people do out there.